Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, class 1 pre class video on power system analysis. In this module, I will be explaining the concepts on representation of power system components. I will be completing this module 1 with the 5 uh, video sessions. This is the first uh, pre class video on representation of power system components. Myself, Dr. M. J. Chandrasekhar, Associate Professor, Department of Triple E, SJB Institute of Technology. So, let us see in session 1 the syllabus there in the module 1 of power system analysis. This module 1 is representation of power system components. In this module, we have introduction, single phase representation of balanced three phase networks, one line diagram, impedance and reactance diagram, drawing on the one line diagram and uh, what are per unit quantities, what are its advantages, how to choose the base values and uh, we have to see how to write the steady state model of a synchronous machine, power transformer, transmission of electrical power, representation of loads. So, all these concepts will be uh, studying in this module 1 representation of power system components. So, let us see what are the basics uh, needed for understanding the representation of power system components. A complete diagram of the power system representing all the three phase becomes uh, too complicated for a system of uh, practical size. In the practical power system, we have many components like uh, major components or uh, generator, transformer, transmission line and uh, loads. Beside this, we have circuit breaker, isolator, current transformer, potential transformer. There are many equipments that may not be possible to represent on the in the format of diagram. So, we have to consider the representation of power system by simplified manner. In its practical size as so much that it may no longer convey the information uh, it is intended to convey if you include all the different components. It is much more practical to represent a power system by means of a simple symbols of each uh, component resulting in what is called one line diagram. So, the needed uh, things for uh, understanding the representation of power system A are So, we have to consider the balanced system. So, unbalanced system what happens? Balanced load, unbalanced load, phase voltage, line voltage, phase current, line current, symmetrical system, unsymmetrical system, bus. All these terminologies we have to understand. What is balanced system? Balanced system is the system in which the load distribution on each of the phase is same. That means, uh, line current and phase currents will be same in all the three phases and uh, line to line voltage between the lines and uh, phase voltages are also same. This will possible only if you put uh, the line parameters which are same in each of the phases and load we have applied is also same. In an unbalanced system, so we may not be having the voltage and currents are same in uh, different phases. Similarly, it happens for balanced load in each phase the load is same in uh, each phase if the load is uh, different then it is unbalanced load phase voltage, line voltage, line current, phase current, symmetrical system, unsymmetrical system and a bus. Bus is a electrical equipment made up of aluminum or copper, aluminum or copper. So, it has to provide a least voltage drop. It is meant for connecting different power system components.
next uh, we will understand what is the uh, basic uh, requirement of uh, power system analysis. See here the present day the power system is complex interconnected uh, electrical uh, network. So, this uh, involves generation, transmission, distribution and consumption all these three layers put together is the power system. Generation we are generating the power from different uh, renewable and uh, non renewable sources. Transmission we are transmitting the power for a uh, long distances because the loads are not nearer to the generating station. We have to transmit the power over the overhead lines this will minimize the losses and uh, with high voltage we are transmitting the power to minimize the losses. And again after transmitting uh, at the load uh, junction here we have to distribute the load among the various uh, uh, loads like domestic, commercial and uh, industrial uh, consumers. Each of these consumers will uh, consume the power at different uh, levels uh, and we have to supply the power to the different uh, loads and uh, consumption of load type is also important whether it is an inductive load or capacitive load or resistive load depending on that it goes. So, let us see the uh, structure of the power system as you are seeing here we have uh, the red means generation, generation is there. So, we are generating the power after generating the power. So, this uh, to uh, 11 kV example. So, at this uh, voltage if you are transmitting power to the different uh, consumers then the transmission losses will be more. In order to reduce the power loss we have to step up the voltage of the generating station from 11 to like 132 kV, 220 kV, 765 kV and even more. So, that can be done in the generation uh, step up transformers and we are transmitting the power from at high voltages through overhead transmission lines over a transmission lines and uh, we are at the consumer side we are again reducing the power voltage to the required value like uh, 132 kV, 66 kV, 11 kV and uh, again we are supplying to the different consumers like primary consumers like uh, industries, secondary consumers like uh, commercial complexes, commercial buildings, hospital like this and again we have uh, the domestic consumers they will supply power with uh, 440 volts or uh, single phase 230 volts. And also in the distribution um, side we are transmitting the power to the um, large bulk power consumers like uh, some big industries that they will take the power from the substation. Uh, around 132 kV or uh, 66 kV we are transmitting the power. This is uh, basically a structure of the power system. Next we will see what are the different power system components. The major power system components we have is the synchronous generator, transmission lines, transformer and uh, the load. Next we will see the schematic diagram of the power system. So, the pictorial representation of the different structure of power system you have seen here the block diagram representation of the same is conveyed in uh, this uh, slide. So, here you are seeing the first one is uh, the generating station, generating station again generating station are of different types like uh, thermal, hydro, nuclear and uh, we are having a step up transformer, we are stepping up the voltage from uh, 11 kV to 220 kV or even more 440 kV and uh, we are uh, transmitting the power uh, at voltages at uh, 200 kV or 400 kV and uh, again in the distribution side we are stepping up the voltage by using step down transformer. and. Uh, we are stepping down to 132 kV or 66 kV and uh, some of these lines are uh, given to the large industrial uh, consumers. At uh, 132 kV and 66 kV we have generation also. Suppose if the generation total small uh, local independent power producers are there 
they can supply the power to the grid uh, at uh, 132 kV or 66 kV of this. Uh, this also one of the generator is connected to the uh, grid through the transformer. And again, we are stepping down further from 132 66 kV to 33 kV or 11 kV. Again, here also we have independent power producers like uh, small wind uh, and these are uh, generating the power and supplying uh, at uh, 33 kV or 11 kV. They are called as primary distribution system. From the primary distribution system, again uh, we are stepping down to 400 volts three phase and we are supplying it to the some small uh, domestic consumers. Now, we will see why we need uh, power system analysis. Till now, we understood what is power system, what are the components it has and uh, what will be the structure of the power system and uh, how the power flows from generating station to the consumer. Now, we will see why we need uh, power system analysis. The first uh, foremost uh, thing here is, first we have to monitor the voltages at the buses and we have to see in the transmission line what will be the real and reactive power flows between the buses. This uh, we will be monitoring, means we are measuring the values of voltage at the buses, real and reactive power flows in the buses and the transmission lines. So, next uh, these informations are used in planning the uh, operation uh, of the power system and also the improvement. And uh, also this is helpful to plan the future expansion of the current system and to analyze the system under different uh, fault conditions and uh, based on different scenarios and we will design the productive devices. So, as to investigate the ability of the system to handle small and uh, large uh, disturbances or faults of any kind. So, the overall power system analysis is very, very important for planning the future development of the present power system. But we are calculating using uh, power system analysis the voltage at the different buses, power flows in the transmission lines. By knowing this, we come to know that what is the present uh, loading condition of the power system. So, example uh, the transmission lines are how much overloaded or uh, what is the present uh, loading generation, how much is the generation load, what is the current status of the load. If you know this, then the same information can be used for planning the operation and the improvement of the power system. That means, we may increase or decrease the loading condition of the transmission lines. Suppose, if you are adding a line or a transmission uh, load, all these uh, whether this can be withstand or not uh, the, on the present system we understand. Suppose, if you want to expand the power system for uh, future needs and uh, what are the different rating of the different components can be installed to the existing grid, we can calculate. And suppose, if there is any fault analysis, uh, it can be done like uh, what will be the fault current we can find okay, through the theoretical calculations by having the power flow analysis. So, these analysis of fault currents are useful in designing the productive system. That means, uh, what will be the rating of the circuit breaker and all we can uh, find. So, these are the things uh, we can understand uh, from the power system. Next, uh, we will see the single phase representation of uh, balanced three phase network. So, the solution of uh, the three phase network under balanced condition is easily carried out by solving the single phase network. So, in the load flow analysis what we do is we are analyzing the power system by considering a single phase. The same we are applying for the remaining two phases. So, consider here the balanced uh, uh, three phase network. Balanced three phase network is one in which uh, each of the phases will have the same characteristic. Example, uh, the individual voltage in each phase and uh, the individual current uh, in each phase uh, remains same and also the material what we use in each phase construction is same. That means, here you are seeing uh, the balanced three phase network. Here we have a E A z g. See z g, z g, z g. That means, in all the three phases z g is common. That means, we are 
using the same type of material for R phase, Y phase and B phase. Similarly, here the phases are marked as A, B, C. You can consider instead of A, B, C, you can mark that uh, phases are R, Y, B also. So, E A is the induced voltage in the uh, first uh, A winding and E B is the induced voltage in the B phase winding and uh, E C is the induced voltage in the uh, C phase winding. So, see these three phases are connected in neut uh, that is star fashion and a neutral is connected and it is having Z n is the neutral uh, impedance and uh, this generation is connected here we have a generation this is generation and uh, this is load. So, this generation is connected to load through this uh, transmission network. So, here transmission, here we have generation, here we have transmission, generation, transmission and uh, distribution. The load here we have considered balanced load. Here is also we have considered the balanced load. Means here Z L is the each phase impedance. Under balance condition, what happens? There is no current flows through the neutral. Therefore, I n is equal to zero. Suppose, if you consider the reference phase uh, A, so here reference phase A, so let us write the uh, voltage equation. So, as you all know that is uh, V is equal to I into Z, V is equal to I into Z, here the voltage is E A, E A is equal to current I A into impedance, here impedance here is the total impedance in this path from uh, neutral n to neutral n to the generation to the neutral n of the load. That means, one phase if you consider here current flows is I A, in this path we have considered the two impedance values Z G and Z L. So, the total impedance is Z G plus Z L is the path impedance and current flowing through this path is current is I A this the product of impedance and current will give us the voltage E A. So, this is what it is written here E A is equal to Z G plus Z L. So, the same equation is written in the circuit form. So, here neutral and this is neutral generator and the load between this we have these three components one is the individual voltage source and uh, the two impedances one represents the source impedance Z G and the load impedance Z L. The current flowing in this path is I A. Next, uh, let us consider the three phase transformer. So, in this three phase transformer, we can consider the primary and secondary that is two winding transformer it is considered in a star fashion and its equivalent circuit we can write like this. This is the transformer, the two winding transformer, primary is star connection and uh, the secondary is also a star connection and uh, the equivalent circuit will be like this. Suppose, if you consider the uh, two winding transformer of type uh, star delta, so we can convert that uh, delta connection to the star as you are seeing here, here delta it is converted into star. So, we know how to convert uh, delta connected uh, network into star. So, that can be written as uh, like in the previous star star, 
but only thing here is n2 divided by root 3 we have to consider. Next, uh, we will see the concept of one line diagram. What is one line diagram? One line diagram is nothing but a compact and a convenient method of representing the power system by using its components The components here we use uh, in single line diagram are one is uh, AC generator or motor we will use this symbol and uh, in case of two winding transformer we will use this symbol and if you have three winding transformer three windings we will consider auto transformer means uh, this is the symbol we use current transformer like this this is the potential transformer disconnecting switch means we will consider like this and circuit breaker as you know this this is the fuse reactor, lighting arrestor. These are the different symbols uh, we use uh, in uh, single line diagram. This one line diagram shows the main connections and arrangements of uh, components. Any particular component may or may not be shown depending on the information required of the system study example if you consider the circuit breaker need not be shown in the load flow analysis but are much uh, it is very essential for uh, short circuit studies so mainly the power system networks are uh, represented by one line diagrams using uh, suitable symbols of the generators motors transformers and loads it is a convenient practical way of uh, network uh, representation rather than drawing the actual three phase uh, diagram. So, this uh, actual three phase diagram uh, may not be, uh, it is very cumbersome and uh, confusing for the practical size of our network. So, once you write the one line diagram like here we are showing, uh, here we are showing a one line diagram. So, in this one line diagram of a simple uh, power system, so here we have uh, generators, here we have a one generator, here second generator, third generator and also we have a loads connected at bus bar, uh, here A and B are the loads and here this is the transmission network, here the transmission side, sending side we have a transformer to step up the voltage and we have a transmission line and uh, in the next uh, far end of the transmission line we have a step down transformer, step down transformer. So, like this we can represent the whole power system by the concept of uh, one line diagram. So, here one line single lines what we are writing it is represented a three phase network and also this one line diagram is comes with uh, the different rating of the individual components example generator 1. So, generator 1 rating example generator 1 is what is the rating of the generator that is uh, what is the MA rating, what voltage it is and what will be the uh, subtransient reactance of the machine like uh, 1.6 ohms like this. This is generator information. Transformer also like this 11 bar 121 kV, what is the rating of power that is 100 MA, what is the subtransient reactance like 5 percent like this. Similarly, the loads also whether it is uh, load is uh, 10 megawatt load or at uh, 0.8 power factor all this information we will be giving. So, along with the different uh, power system major components it comes with the rating of the different uh, components. Next we will see how to write the impedance diagram and reactance diagram of the individual uh, one line diagrams. See what is uh, impedance diagram? Here we are replacing the different power system components by its equivalent circuits. Example generator, transformer, transmission line, load all these components are replaced with their equivalent circuits. See here if we consider the one line diagram it provides the concise information about the system, the performance of the system load conditions are upon the occurrence of the short circuit cannot be directly 
calculated using one line diagram. So, here the impedance diagram is obtained by replacing the individual component of the power system by its equivalent circuit. So, what are the assumptions we do in the impedance diagram formation? So, what we do here is the generator if you consider represented as uh, EMF source is in series with reactance. This is what it is told here the generator is replaced with generator is replaced with EMF source that is E A in series with the inductive reactants. The single phase transformers are shown as ideal transformer with impedances on appropriate side and the magnetizing reactants of the transformers are neglected. Here transformer two winding transformers. So, primary and secondary star star primary and secondary star star it is equivalent circuit is this. Example if you consider the transformer of this kind transformer. So, how to write uh, the equivalent circuit of this? So, this is primary side and uh, this is secondary side and uh, this is the magnetizing circuit. So, in the impedance diagram we are neglecting the magnetizing circuit, we will be considering this is the primary side and this is the secondary side uh, impedance. The transmission lines uh, are replaced by a equivalent pi model. Example, if you consider the transmission line of the between P and Q, so in uh, pi model it can be represented like this. I have studied this. So, this is how we can represent the equivalent circuit of a transmission line. These are the send capacitance and this is the series impedance. So, with the replacement of different power system components with its equivalent circuit, the given one line diagram can be represented as shown in this slide. See here we have a generator, generator 1 equivalent circuit is its source uh, EMF with impedance and then we have a load connected in parallel. Therefore, load is represented as Z that is Z L R plus X and we have a transformer, transformer is represented as two winding and we have a transmission line, transmission line. So, transmission line is represented like this that is a pi model and this is the transformer 1. Similarly, the transformer 2 and here we have a transformer 2, here we have a transformer 2, transformer 2 that is a magnetizing component and this and we have a load, we have a load connected in parallel. Generator 2 and generator 3 are connected in parallel. So, most important thing here is we have to see how many elements are connected in parallel and how many elements are connected in series. Series connected elements in power system are nothing but your uh, the, the transformer, transformer, transmission line, these are uh, series connected elements, but uh, the starting and the end they are connected in parallel. Example, uh, bus number 1, we have a generator, we have load. So, connect this generator 1 and uh, load 1 in parallel and uh, this component transformer 1, transformer 2, transmission line, all these three components series like here, transformer 1, transmission line, transformer 2 and in the end, we may consider 
there are two generators generator 2 and generator 3 see here generator 2 generator 3 and load uh, 2 how they are connected they are all in parallel so that's for load uh, generator two generators and load how they are connected they are in parallel so connect them in parallel so transformer transmission line and transformer 1 transformer 2 and load these three are connected in series connect them in series and uh, here generator 1 and uh, load they are connected in parallel yes this is how we can uh, write the equivalent circuit of individual components make sure so you should know the individual equivalent circuit of the individual components so upon that you can easily write the impedance diagram next we will see the reactance diagram for a given for the same one line diagram for the same one line diagram In the reactance diagram, we do some more additional uh, and uh, simplifying assumptions. The impedance diagram can be simplified further to obtain the corresponding reactance diagram. So, the additional assumptions are the first one is the resistance is often omitted during the fault analysis. This causes a very negligible uh, power loss. So, resistances are neglected. Loads, we are not considering loads. Okay, it is represented as a series reactance uh, in circuit. Transmission lines capacitance are uh, neglected. That means, I will write uh, what are the things we neglect in the. So, the resistances, whether it is resistances in any of the component, whether it is series or parallel, we neglect because power loss uh, is very negligible. And uh, if you consider the transmission. Uh, uh, line transmission line so here resistance transmission line equivalent circuit oh, transmission line equivalent circuit is like this let us consider a transmission line equivalent circuit it has resistance reactance and shunt capacitance we do consider this this is the equivalent circuit of a transmission line transmission line in this we are neglecting the resistance we are neglecting the shunt capacitance. So, the left out thing for a transmission line is only the reactance. Similarly, for a transfer, trans transformer, similarly for a transformer, what we do is, suppose transformer symbol is like this, transformer symbol, transformer symbol is like this and its equivalent circuit as I written before primary winding, secondary winding and then magnetizing component. Okay, this is the this is the resistance, reactance, this is primary and secondary. The equivalent circuit is only this much. That means, we are neglecting the magnetizing component and then we are neglecting the resistances in primary and secondary winding and put together these uh, two reactances together in primary and secondary that is the transformer reactance. This is how we write the equivalent circuit with assumptions for writing the reactance diagram. Let us see how the reactance diagram for a given one line diagram. See here we have generator load neglected, this is transformer 1, this is transmission line, transformer 2 and then this is generator 2, generator 2, generator 3 equivalent circuit, generator 1 equivalent circuit. They are neglecting the neglected the load. So, this is how we can write the reactance diagram of a simple power system. Next, we will see what are per unit uh, quantities. 
that uh, perennial quantities all those things i will be explaining in the next uh, video so to summarize to summarize this in this uh, pre class video we have learned what is uh, one line diagram how to write the impedance diagram reactance diagram for a given power system before that you understood how to write the different equivalent circuit for different components and uh, why we use the concept of power system analysis before ending this uh, video i will be giving one more uh, small exercise to understand these concepts better i will consider a simple uh, one line diagram and explain how to write the impedance and uh, reactance diagram see here i will consider one uh, simple one line diagram here we have a generator transformer and transmission line and one more trans load transformer and then load so here we have a generator one transformer one transmission line and then transformer two and the load this is one line diagram for this how to write the impedance diagram uh, let us see so impedance diagram write the equivalent circuit of generator write in parallel that is uh, the beginning and end components you should write it in parallel so that is uh, resistance and uh, reactance and then the source this is for uh, generator 1 and then uh, transformer 1 you can write like this resistance reactance resistance reactance and then the magnetizing component like this you write this is for transformer 1 this is the equivalent circuit it is written for generator and then transmission line resistance reactance then shunt capacitance here shunt capacitance so this i written for transmission line and then similarly transformer 2 resistance reactance for primary resistance reactance for secondary and then the magnetizing circuit magnetizing circuit you write this is put together is transformer 2 and the load you can write as impedance that is that is zl is the load so this is load this is how we can write the impedance diagram by writing or replacing the individual components with their equivalent circuit so what we do in next is for writing the impedance uh, for writing the reactance diagram for writing the reactance diagram what we do is we are neglecting the resistances here resistance all resistances uh, where and all i considered i will be neglecting and then i will be neglecting the magnetizing circuit shunt capacitances and this if you omit all this you will get the reactance diagram this is single line diagram first one then the equivalent circuit is impedance diagram impedance diagram now i am writing the reactance diagram reactance diagram for writing the reactance diagram i will erase this part will be neglecting this part the equivalent circuit uh, some of the components if you neglect you will get the reactance diagram see here generator generator transformer 1 transmission line transformer 2 and load so generator what you do you write only the source and with uh, reactance 
Next, you have transformer 1, only one reactance. Transmission line, one reactance. Transformer 2, one reactance. And then this is the load. Load reactance. Load, XL. So, this is transformer 2, X. This is XTL. This is XT1. This is XG. This is EG. This is called reactance diagram. This is called reactance diagram. In this diagram, we are not included the re resistances of individual components and equivalent circuit to the magnetizing component and the shunt capacitances we are neglected.